Hey there, LEGO fans, and welcome back. Alex here. In this video, we're going to open up this BrickLink box here. This is something I've been uh, wanting to get my hands on for a number of months now. Uh, this is a product of a collaboration between the LEGO group and the BrickLink website. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what we've got. All right, got this thing open finally. We've got a pretty good tape job here. And here we go. We've got... Hot Shot Carnival. Whoa, bottom's falling out there. Okay. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a whole cover. Okay. Wow. But before we open that up, let's take a look at this this thing here. Uh, this is one of many designs. Thirteen, I think, of uh, designs that were submitted to uh, BrickLink. Uh, for this uh, this A Fall Designer program uh, that they put together, a lot of people submitted their ideas, and a few were selected uh, based on certain criteria. Uh, and this is one of them. This is the one that I ordered. It's called Hot Shot Carnival, uh, and uh, this is the one I thought would work pretty well in my city uh, because of my amusement park. So let's take a look here. So this has a hundred. And 50, I'm sorry, 591 pieces, 149 unique Lego elements. Oh, this is pretty cool. Whoa, whoa. I don't know if I can get all this in, in one shot there, but that is really cool. I was not expecting that to be included here. That's pretty neat. Um, let's see, is there anything else? Oh, there's, this is the back of the, uh, that's pretty cool. It's solid, it's not open back. I, that's pretty cool. And there's the front. Let's go ahead and take a look at the box itself. Hope I got to cut the, Cut the bottom here. There we go. All right, now as I'm opening this up, it's got this gold sticker here. It says Hot Shot Carnival designed by Brixinator. So it actually shows the user ID or username of the person that designed this set. Okay, very nice packaging. This is high quality. I'm impressed. All right, what is this? Oh, here's all of the. Uh, designs that finished. Oh, this is pretty cool. So this is a, a thank you. Uh, so yes, you, again, you have the Brick uh, BrickLink and the Lego group uh, giving a celebrating of, of the 60th anniversary of the Lego brick. In fact, I see it right there. Uh, this is a little fun element you get. Let's open this. Well, let's not open it up yet, I guess. Um, but you get this, I guess it's more of a Technic design element. Does it have, yeah, it has the Lego logo on it. And uh, it's uh, got a printing on it called yeah, 60 years, so celebrating 60 years of the Lego brick. It's pretty cool how they make it, um, you can put those axles, Technic axles through that, That's interesting. And Technic brick two by four with three axle holes with 60 years pattern. Exclusive element, ooh, very, very cool. So that is actually kind of a nice touch. Let's put this card aside and take a look at how they've done the packing here. All right, so they have organized these. Uh, the plastic bagging is very, very different than what Lego, uh, the Lego group uses. Uh, but it looks like it's doing the dot job just nice. So we got one C. Do we have one B? We do have one B. And we have one A. All right, very nice. Take these out. And then we have two B. Two B or not two B, right? Two A and two B. All right, and then we've got some loose elements here. Very large elements. These look like, these better be brand new elements. They look like they're all brand new. Very nice and clean. Green base plate, of course, and let's look at the instruction booklet here. Let's see how well does it, well, first of all, the feel of it is high quality. This is, um, even feels a little bit better than a lot of the uh, the LEGO uh, building instructions we got. So, very cool, celebrating 60 years of the LEGO brick with the LEGO group. Very cool, BrickLink's logo there. Very nice, message from the designer. Oh, that's cool, that's a nice touch, I like that. They can give their own message uh, in this as well, that's kind of cool. And let's see, let's kind of go into the instructions a little bit here. So let's see, the, you, you can tell the printing's a little bit different. So it's not the Lego group printing this, uh, but you can see that the, it's very high quality, I think. I'm looking at this, it shows what you need in each uh, step of the instructions. Highlights them in yellow, very, very reminiscent of Lego instruction. Uh, again, very nice. Yeah, I don't think, I don't have any problem with this. This is very nice, very high quality stuff. I. Uh, they went all out on this. Um, so now before we we go crazy and build this thing, I want to talk a little bit about this designer program because this is a pretty cool thing that I, I learned about some time ago. And let's see, I think um, you could order these things. It was all about crowdfunding. And if they got enough crowdfunding, uh, their, uh, their sets, their creation was going to be uh, produced, mass produced to some extent, where people like me and you can buy these things. 
and a lot of these things were very, very popular. They had an enormous response, uh, and they got, I think, uh, let's see, uh, 400 submissions were sent, uh, and they had 16 finalists were chosen from nine different countries. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual creations. Now, they said they had 16 finalists, but I only counted 13 actual sets in production, so perhaps three uh, did not meet the mark. I'm not sure on that, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the first one here, the Wild West Saloon by Lego Pard. Uh, retails for $150. And then you have Steampunk Mini Chess. This is by far the uh, least expensive of these uh, particular models from Corvus A, retailing at $38. And of course, Hot Shot Carnival by Brixinator was one that caught my eye early on for $58. The Lego Story by Brick Jonas, retailing for $100. Bikes for $15. This is actually looks like one that I would probably pick up for my city a little later on. Isle of Peril uh, for $100 by Jake Sadovich. This is uh, definitely micro scale. I, I, I like looking at micro scale. I don't collect it uh, myself. And we have Imagine It, Build It by Brick Baron for just under $70. The Antique Fire Engine, this looks pretty fun. This is a kind of a more of an expensive one uh, from Boone Langston for $150. Skyline Express, this is an interesting one from Jazz, uh, Jazz Lacraz for $140. This looks like a kind of a, a product of a marriage between the airport shuttle and the latest roller coaster from the Lego group. Vintage Roadster by Galatech for $55. And we have the Science Tower, it looks kind of interesting, by T-Brick uh, for $130. And we have this Eight Studs, uh, I believe it's a house. Uh, I thought it was more of a, a cafe, but it caught my eye. Uh, this is from Klein Rom. Retails for $100. I actually ordered this, so I'm going to get this one. It looks like it's pretty cool looking that I can actually put this in my city somewhere and make it look pretty cool. And then the last one is uh, the Lonestein Castle. This is one that is, I think, the most popular and the most expensive. This is already sold out. Uh, no, not sure if this is going to actually be available or not, but uh, BrickLink is telling us that if you miss your opportunity to pre-order, you can still order these through the end of June. So June 30th is the last date that these will be on sale. Well, enough talk. Let's go ahead and get this thing built and see if we can find a good spot for it in the amusement park. And the Hot Shot Carnival is complete, and here are the results. Uh, three minifigures with this thing. Looks like you get a uh, father and son combination. Uh, this lady here, I believe, is supposed to be mining the store, uh, but I have her out just so we can get a look at her. Some pretty cool, uh, No, uh, not a lot of detail on the minifigures here. I think the shirt of the female is, is about, uh, about as, as fancy as it gets, uh, but the overall look on this thing is fantastic. A lot of great use of colors uh, by this designer, uh, Brixinator. Uh, about, uh, again, 500 plus pieces in this. I think half of them are easily in the making of this sign up top. So many uh, very small pieces go into that. But look at the back of this. Great design. Uh, even on the back, it has decorative elements there. Uh, well, decoration-like elements anyway. And I love how he put this uh, rifle together uh, using these Technic elements. Very, very good job. And even just the use of this target there. Uh, very, very nice job on that. Uh, we kind of look at the color scheme here. A lot of good use of colors, bright colors. I was kind of thinking as I was building this, uh, if the designer... Uh, if the original design was altered in any way, because you guys know this is very similar to Lego Ideas, and in that, whenever Lego approves one to be mass-produced, they always 
make it very different, uh, redesign it. Uh, and the worst example that I can think of was the Catrum 7. Uh, from the designer's uh, finished product to what LEGO came out with was pretty disappointing. Uh, but regardless of that, I'm not sure if this was if this is identical to the final final. Uh, results that the designer had in mind, but regardless, it is great. It has a lot of great detail. So this is the exterior. Obviously, that's kind of a fun attraction. So let's go ahead. I'm going to have to rip off the roof here so we can take a look at the inside. So I have violently removed the roof in here. We have the interior. We have uh, the targets. Obviously, there are four targets, it looks like, that are uh, there and we have I guess these are just the extra targets in case these ones get kind of worn out if people are really really good at shooting not a f big huge difference uh, between I don't know if you have a, a person here uh, shooting away that's uh, I don't know a good chance that they're going to get a bullseye and win one of these amazing prizes right here uh, from everything from a teddy bear all the way to a coffee mug I don't know if that's really a prize or if the person working there is just having something to drink between uh, customers arriving or whatever but in the corner they have uh, gun racks so four rifles there uh, you get all four guns. Other thing to mention here, there are no extra pieces with this. With any real Lego set, you get a pile of extra pieces. No extra pieces. They are to the mark on the elements that you use. So um, hopefully they don't miss any. Uh, another thing to mention here is on the interior is the uh, these boxes here in the corner, uh, suggesting that are there is other merchandise that uh, they can use to replenish these gifts as they are won. I wanted to point out that they have this uh, wall element that I haven't seen before. This is a uh, four stud by five stud uh, element, a wall element here. And you notice it's got this wave going through it. I thought when I was putting it in there that it would might actually obstruct something that's very, that's right up against it, but it doesn't. It's it's right straight up and down. Uh, just, you know, looks like a funhouse mirror kind of a thing. So I'm, I'm guessing Lego will have other elements like this in different colors, including uh, possibly translucent, but uh, very great use. And I wonder if the creator actually had use of these before, uh, or if that was something that was new uh, for something like this, but uh, good use of them regardless all the way around. So uh, very cool element to have, and it belongs very much in this particular set. Now, if I can find any fault with this particular building, it's the fact that we have these uh, red plate elements at the top here. They're used to uh, secure the roof together when you're putting it together before you apply it. Uh, but once you apply the roof, these can become loose and they fall off into the building and it is very hard to get your hand in there to retrieve them and put them back onto the roof to secure that. So that's kind of nitpicky, I know, but that was kind of uh, annoying because it happened more than once. Another thing is that it's so hard to see that awesome detail inside when you put this down like that. It's so dark even with my bright lights, got to tilt it up a little bit uh, to see inside. But that's just kind of how it goes uh, when you build things like this. But hey, we know what's in there and it's pretty darn cool. Another thing I want to point out here is that I've never seen this before, but in the back of the instruction booklet, um, the cover actually, there's a, a color guide. And I don't know if this is Legos, uh, the Lego Group's color guide or if it's Bricklinks. I think it's actually Bricklinks because you have a, a, an address here to go to. But um, I thought that was interesting to see that. Uh, there's even a chrome gold. How about that? I had no idea. So many colors. But anyway, so there is one of the many great results of the AFOL Designer Program hosted by BrickLink in partnership with the LEGO Group. Hopefully this continues on and we see, see this again. Uh, I don't know if these uh, particular sets are going to appreciate in value if it's something that you'll want to get as a collector for your city and then in the box. Uh, these boxes are pretty sleek, I will say, and these uh, kind of a nice, and they didn't have to do this. Uh, uh, go kind of the extra mile here, but they did. So I think that's pretty neat. So hopefully they'll do this again, maybe once a year, or I don't, I don't know if this is a one and done kind of thing, but uh, I love it. And uh, I'm going to take advantage of it and get another one and possibly some more as well uh, before they uh, end at the end of June. So if you haven't, uh, please get yours. Oh, let's see. Uh, let's see if I put this back together here at the back. And if those elements fall out again, click, click, click. Didn't hear any. It's a good sign. All right. Okay. Now I don't know if I'm going to find a spot for this downstairs. I'm going to go. I'm going to walk down there and see if we can find a spot for it in the amusement park uh, without tearing something up too bad. So downstairs in the amusement park, here is where I've elected to put this right now, which I think looks pretty darn good next to bumper cars. I didn't take it off its base. It's still uh, very much on, on that green base plate there. I just thought I didn't want to make it too permanent so I can still move things around. But uh, despite that, it looks 
looks pretty good, I think. So uh, a good a good addition to the amusement park, which is exactly what I thought uh, when I first saw a picture of it many months ago. So hopefully we'll see some more good stuff uh, from the partnership between BrickLink and the Lego Group. Uh, so that's going to be it for now, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and hopefully we'll have some more good stuff here for you in the very near future. As always, you guys have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.